dissident uh, uh, MPs within a federal caucus love a vacuum. And since there's, there's no evidence over the last month that Aaron O'Toole is the leader of anything or that he has any opinion on much, uh, people who have strong opinions are popping up like mushrooms all over the place. There's, uh, there's this caucus, there's another caucus on, uh, on, on um, the energy sector within the Conservative caucus. And, 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 and they are uh, taking the silence from the leadership, from the leader, Aaron O'Toole, uh, and, and the fact that in many cases, they were lucky to get reelected because uh, the even mildly mitigatedly pro-vaccine stance of Aaron O'Toole uh, marked him as a sellout for, for, for people who hold these opinions. Um, I mean, I talked to one MP from Alberta who is uh, vaccinated, figures that this MP lost about 15,000 votes because, uh, because of the fact that they were vaccinated. And so um, this, this um, uh, psychodrama over whether vaccines are effective or dangerous or a tool of uh, Bill Gates's domination or whatever, that so many of us are uh, plugging our ears, balling up our hands into fists, you know, wishing it would go away. It's just not going away. And it's now the dominant drama in the Conservative Party of Canada. Well, you know, I would ask what leadership, if this is happening in his party, and if these uh, these runaway MPs and, and, and senators are doing this, uh, it's because he never put his foot down. Listen, we listened to him throughout the campaign. Marika was there as well, all our colleagues. We asked him questions about vaccine mandates. His answers were always vague. Well, this is what happens when you're the leader, but you refuse to lead. Uh, you've got to lead. You, you heard Brian Mulroney, the former prime minister, on your show uh, a few weeks ago saying, you know, this is what you do when you're a leader. It's not always easy and you can't always be nice and you shouldn't be vague. They're on the wrong side of history, period. Another week begins, the Conservative Party trying to navigate vaccine mandates. Leader Aaron O'Toole still will not disclose how many members of his caucus are unvaccinated. He only says all Conservative MPs who participate in debate on the Hill will be vaccinated. Here's another wild card. On this week's question period here on CTV, Conservative MP Marilyn Gladue called into question the severity of the COVID pandemic compared to polio. Gladue is an MP from Ontario. She is spearheading a so-called Civil Liberties Caucus against vaccine mandates. O'Toole saying her comments were inappropriate and her interview caused confusion over the health and well-being of Canadians, but he will not go as far as removing her from the caucus. Listen to this. It's important for members of Parliament to advocate for their, uh, their constituents who may be losing a job or may need reasonable accommodation. We do that all the time on a range of issues. But it's very different to cause confusion with respect to the health and well-being of Canadians. Ms. Gladue's interview did that yesterday, and it's not appropriate at a time we should be answering questions about vaccine hesitancy, not creating new questions. So our team will, will deal with this as a team. It could pose problems, though, for Aaron O'Toole. Let's bring in our press gallery again and start with uh, Ian Bailey on this. Ian, what does Aaron O'Toole need to do here? You know, I'm, I'm not really sure here because Mr. O'Toole, um, my understanding of the Reform Act suggests that he can't really boot MPs out of caucus. He is, his inclination from his remarks today suggests he wouldn't be inclined to do that if he could. He seems to be satisfied and content with Ms. Gladue, for example, to carry on with her caucus work and for this just all to rumble on. And by the way, he'll be speaking to the media again tomorrow, and so there'll be more questions, no doubt about this. And that's the challenge here. Until this is resolved, perhaps on November 23rd or November 25th or something, this is going to overshadow many things I'm sure Mr. O'Toole would prefer to talk about. Um, um, you know, and until he provides information, perhaps, about how many MPs are vaccinated. In so many ways, this is just going to go on. I understand Ms. Gladue's team is meeting tonight, so that's going to raise other questions. It'll just roll on and on for quite some time to come. I can't help but think, Stephanie, this becomes a bigger and bigger headache for Aaron O'Toole as well the longer it goes on. It's a question of his leadership, really, at the end of the day. I mean, he is, you know, accurate in saying that the Reform Act, which is a piece of legislation that seeks to give uh, members of Parliament a little bit more say over caucus, not put the leader always in control. But is he now being held back by the Reform Act? And let's not forget, even mm -hmm. though the Reform Act gives members of Parliament the right mm -hmm. to decide who will or won't sit in caucus, 
not only is he the leader, he is also a member of parliament. So if he really wanted to lead the charge to determine who gets to stay in caucus and who gets to go based on <laughs> whether it's their stance on COVID or whether it's anything else that might come up in the next six, eight, 12 months, um, he can do it. He's the leader and he can find a way, but otherwise it's putting caucus in charge of the party. And then it leads to the question, at what point are caucus members themselves, um, should we be held, holding them to account for tolerating these views within their own, if these views are considered, you know, by some Canadians or the majority of Canadians as being unacceptable. Yeah, and there was a discussion about this so-called Civil Liberties Caucus numbering, Scott, somewhere between 15 and 30 MPs. Your take on what Aaron O'Toole has done and needs to do? Well, he looks as weak as yesterday's tea. It's just that plain. And this Reform Act, it's leader kryptonite. It's crazy town. So the caucus can initiate your removal as a leader, the review of your leadership as a leader, but you can't boot a caucus member out? It's, it's, it's insane. It is literally bananas. You are handicapped as a leader from taking your rightful position of saying, sorry, this is what works and this is what doesn't. And, you know, Aaron O'Toole uh, uh, ends up in a place where he campaigned as a true blue conservative. He was happy to invite the support of these kinds of folks. Then, of course, he runs as a moderate during the election. He loses. And now everyone suspects that he's actually not sincere in anything that he says. He doesn't have any hand. Ian's uh, colleague at the Globe and Mail this weekend, uh, Campbell Clark, wrote a column saying he's been treed by his own party. He came down from that tree today to give his news conference. He might as well have stood up in the branches because he just displayed his weakness. It was a really, really uncomfortable press conference to watch. And he's in a really uncomfortable and impossible position because it doesn't matter what he thinks. He can't do anything no matter even he did want to. And we did hear from Justin Trudeau, of course, using this perhaps as an opportunity to get his opinion out there. Let's listen to what he had to say about this. They're saying they should get special treatment because they're MPs, that they don't need to be protecting the people in their workplaces alongside them. They don't need to be setting an example for all Canadians who really should be leaning in on vaccinations. That's the furthest thing from who you are, who we are as Liberals, that you could possibly imagine. And unfortunately, we're still going to have to do that fight. We're still going to have to stand up and point out that MPs are people there to serve and protect and care for their fellow citizens. And Maureen, as the Conservative here, how much of a distraction is this becoming for your party and for Aaron O'Toole? You know, Todd, I, I agree. I think it is, a, it is a, a distraction. I think we're now starting, obviously, to see the, the end, of, end of this uh, pandemic. And uh, I, I think there's a, a will or a, a hope, at least on behalf of uh, Canadians, that you know, we can get moving and talk about the issues and, and get back to work. Uh, this is a distraction. Uh, I think it's a, um, I, I guess what's, what's challenging about it is that you've got, whether it's 15, 20, 25 MPs, whatever the, the number is, um, you know, I think one of the things to remember is that there are oftentimes a number of these uh, groups that get uh, put together within the, the, the House of Commons on a variety of issues. I would expect that this one will uh, eventually, uh, it will lose its raison d'etre. It, uh, the, the, the pandemic will have lost its, its trail. And what we're going to end up happening is that there'll be not much left for this group to talk about. Uh, in the meantime, though, I think Aaron needs to remain focused on his job as leader of, opposi of the opposition. I think he needs to really focus on the issues that are important to Canadians now. And obviously there's issues about uh, getting our economy back on track, getting people working, and, and making sure we can support those businesses, those particularly small and medium-sized businesses that need it so much. Mm. So I think it's about that, that his focus needs to be on what Canadians are talking about, and really this, this, this group of MPs who, if they want to have these kinds of conversations and discussions, well, I, I suggest they go to it. We're almost out of time, but I just want to get Stephanie to weigh in as well. You know, a Conservative MP-elect Leslie Lewis sending out tweets questioning COVID vaccines for children. How precarious right now do you think Aaron O'Toole's leadership is? Well, I mean, he serves at the pleasure of caucus at the moment. At, at any point, somebody could whip a letter out of their back pocket saying there's that, you know, the num required number of MPs wants to force a vote on his leadership. 
the, the question becomes how tenable is that position? At some point, does it not have to get put to a vote so that he can continue on to lead? And listen, if he really wants to get on with the business of government, then he should get on with the business of his own party. We haven't seen a list of shadow critics yet. We don't know who's going to be repping the opposition on key files. What are they going to do about, you know, some of the regulations coming on the carbon tax, on the oil and gas sector? There's a whole bunch of issues that they're not really speaking up on now, not here having their voice heard on now, because they are mired clearly in what seems like an internal debate around vaccine mandates when that ship has sailed for the majority of Canadians. So if they want to get to work, then get to work. I can give you 30 seconds, Ian. What do you think? I think this is um, this is a problem for Mr. O'Toole now, but wait until um, November 22nd. I mean, this is going to uh, be the subject of quite some focus when MPs return and we see uh, some Conservatives may not return or some will return. So this isn't going any way anytime soon. I guess Mr. O'Toole is lucky there is no election in mid-December. Um, and obviously by the time the next election, I think Maureen's right, by the time the next election rolls around, we may have moved on from these matters. Uh, 15 seconds to you, Scott, and that's it. What do you think? I don't sure we're going to move on from these matters. I mean, hopefully COVID is well behind us. But if you're in the business of permitting and peddling things that aren't true, things that are anti-science, things that are nonsensical, then that is a problem. And leaders have a response to that. Leaders stand up and say it's wrong. Get out of the room. Well, Aaron O'Toole can't do that right now. Scott Reed, Stephanie Levitz, Ian Bailey, and Maureen Harquail joining us today. A pleasure. Thank you for taking the time for CTV and for Power Play as always. Thanks. Thank you. And that is your Power Play Day in Politics. Thank you for joining us.